Hello guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to grow lion's mane mushroom using only jars. This video is mainly directed at beginners because we are going to be using a very simple technique to get the jars to fruit. But first let me crack on with a brief list of requirements you're going to need to perform this grow. Firstly you're going to need a pressure cooker vermiculite, brown rice flour, micropore tape and tin foil, large glass jars, and finally a lion's mane liquid culture syringe. The substrate we are going to be using for this grow is known as PF Tech. And the first step you want to take to create this substrate is to add four cups of vermiculite to a mixing bowl. Next, you should add two cups of water to your vermiculite and then mix until it is a similar consistency to wet sand. Now that I have finished mixing, I am adding two cups of brown rice flour to the bowl. Mix until there is an even consistency and you can no longer see the brown rice flour powder. And at this point, my coffee table is looking like a scene from train spotting. So I apologize if you're watching this video on public transport, as you're probably going to be getting some funny looks. Once that's mixed in evenly, start packing the substrate into the jaws. You want to leave around a 2 inch gap from the top of the lid to the substrate. This is where the mushroom is going to fruit. Right, and here is a sensual and slow close-up of the jaw. I'm just trying to outline the gap between the substrate and the jaw lid where the mushroom is going to fruit. The 
The next step is to cover the gas exchange holes with two strips of micro pore tape and then cover the lids with tin foil. Finally, secure the foil with elastic bands. Fill your pressure cooker with two pints of water and place the jaws inside the pressure cooker. Secure the lid and place the pressure cooker on 15 psi, then turn on the heat. Wait 90 minutes for the pressure cooker to heat and sterilize the jaws and then leave it to cool overnight. Alright guys. Today is inoculation day, this is where the hard work begins. Put on your face masks and rubber gloves and start wiping down the surfaces you'll be using with rubbing alcohol. Because this is a beginner video, I'm not going to be using a still air box for inoculation. It'll just increase the barrier to entry for beginners and although still air boxes work great, it might scare people off. Remove the foil from your lids and wipe down the lid with alcohol. Place a small strip of micro pore tape beside the hole which you're planning on injecting into. Flame sterilize your needle until glowing red, then insert it into the hole. Inject one milliliter of liquid culture into the jar along the glass. It is important to be quick when flipping down that micro pore tape. It needs to be done just as the syringe leaves the hole. Right guys, PowerPoint presentation time. After about seven days, you can see a faint line of mycelium here, here, and here at the bottom of the jaws.
here is a better shot of the mycelium and here is another picture showing how the healthy mycelium should look while colonizing. Don't panic and assume you have grown cobweb mold. This is what cobweb mold looks like. It doesn't stick to the substrate and it grows chaotically and extremely fast. After about 14 days or so, your jaws will start to look like this. After a further 10 or 14 days, you can see the mycelium starting to climb the jaws. Here you can see how the white one has filled out correctly and the others have stalled. I'm going to show you how you can fix that if this happens. Right, because the other two jaws were not fruiting inside the jaw, I took a Ziploc bag, cut a hole along the end and created a small humidity tent around the jaw. Today is the day I'm going to be harvesting the mushrooms. It's been about four or six weeks since inoculation and the mushrooms are ready for picking. Don't be silly like me and attempt to get the mushroom out with a knife. Just use a spoon, it's much easier. And it'll save you a trip to the hospital if things go wrong. So once I spoon this mushroom out, it weighs around 53 grams. This mushroom is probably not going to be the best mushroom for cooking with, but I'm using it to make a tincture anyway, so I'm not that bothered. These next ones, which I'm going to show you, look way more presentable for cooking. Right guys, thank you, that's a wrap. Remember, a full guide of this tutorial can be found over at my website, easymushroom.com. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I ended up getting a puppy, so I haven't had a lot of time to work on creating videos. Um, but he's settled in now, so I should be able to create more content. If you're interested in how to grow mushrooms without a big expensive setup, or just neat tricks around growing gourmet mushrooms, then 
feel free to like, subscribe, and check out the website. Cheers. Bye.